But the Twin Towers are scoring, and the Celtics are doing it the balanced way, leading by 10 at the half. Live from Boston, CBS Sports coverage of the 1986 NBA Finals is sponsored by Renault Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA. Armor All, it's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. And by Liberty Mutual, for your auto, home, life, and business insurance. or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. Miller's made the American way. The Boston Celtics are on a scoring pace of 120, and they lead the Houston Rockets by 10 points. And good evening again, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Some late-breaking stories around the NBA. First of all, there is a report that the Golden State Warriors would be ready to trade last year's top draft choice, Chris Mullen, out of St. John's. Now, reportedly, the Warriors were not pleased with his rookie performance, nor were they satisfied with the way he came back from an injury late in the season. However, in talking with the Warrior front office, they say they are not shopping mulling around. Meanwhile, a couple of coaching changes to report. Bob Weiss no longer is Dick Mata's assistant down at Dallas. He has moved on to become the head coach of San Antonio. And as we reported on Monday, Jack Ramsey now is out officially as the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. He has been replaced by Mike Schuler, formerly an assistant with the Milwaukee Bucks. We must show you this piece of tape. It is one of life's more embarrassing moments. At the introduction ceremony, Schuler was looking for his chair. <laughs> Mike was able to recover, fortunately for the Trailblazers and for him. Now a gentleman who suffered an even more public pratfall than that a short time ago. Magic, everyone here in the Boston Garden asking, why aren't you out there on the floor with the Los Angeles Lakers? What happened? Well, the Twin Towers is the reason I'm up here talking to you now, not down on the floor playing. But they just dominated us inside and uh, just took it to us. And we just couldn't uh, deal with their inside game took it to you inside, couldn't deal with it. Now, there's a Western Conference team. Are the Lakers going to have to make some moves to beef up inside and help Kareem next year? I think we have to get a big forward, no question about it, or a big person. Well, first of all, is Kareem coming back? Yes, Kareem will be back, and uh, he'll be ready to go. You know, he, he, he he's our hub. He's our captain, right. so he's going to lead us. But we need a big man like a 6'10", 6 6'9". 6 well, how about really... big like Moses Malone? Now, he's available, <laughs> according to some reports. Would he work in with the Lakers, or is he the wrong kind of center? Well, we would love to have Moses, no question about it, because the rebound factor. We need rebounds, and especially defensively rebounds. And we can match up then with anybody if we have some, somebody like him. Magic, your relationship with Larry Bird is unbelievable. You two have been in the league seven years. If the Celtics win this, you two will have been on winning teams in six of those seven years. Is Larry Bird, in your mind, the greatest player in the game today? Well, no question he's the best playing right now. He does so many things. He shoots inside. He shoots outside. He can pass. He can rebound. And his, I think people misunderstand Larry because... His awareness and smarts of the game is what makes him, not everything else that he does, but his, uh, just as smart of the game, knowing what to do at what time of the game. Will they stay in command now here in the second half in the Boston Garden? No question, because of him. All right. And right now, Houston is not getting any penetration. They're looking to shoot over the top, and they can't beat Boston over the top because they don't have that many great outside shooters. Magic, you stay right here. We're going to take a look at one of those adversaries who eliminated you in the Western Conference Final. Pat O'Brien will have the story on Akeem Olajuwon after these messages from your local station. In the Boston Garden, the Celtics leading the Houston Rockets. And, of course, there's some golf news to report. Fred Couples, one of the longest hitters on the Pro Tour, tied the course record at the Congressional in the first round of the Kemper. He fired an 8-under 64, finishing up there with the putt on the 18th. Couples, of course, is one of those golfers that everyone says is capable of dominating any tournament because of the length off the tee. And you will see the last two rounds on Saturday and Sunday here on CBS. Now, Akeem Olajuwon is a basketball player capable of dominating any game he's in. 
And for a close-up and personal look at him, let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat. All right, Brent, thank you. And get out your red, white, and blue, because when you do talk about Akeem Olajuwon, you talk about the great opportunities that this country offers. And while this country is celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, that statue from Nigeria is celebrating six years of American liberty. <laughs> Uh, I love this country. I want to be here. I think I, I, America is the greatest country in the world, and there's no question about that. I've been all, all over Europe, and there's no country compared to the U.S. No better place indeed, especially if you live the American dream the Akeem way, driving through life literally and figuratively above it all. And if clothes make the man, so does the pad. It seems he's always saying thank you. I think I'm very, very fortunate, uh, just simply because... Uh, I'm doing what I, you know, what I love to do. The long journey to American stardom began in Lagos, Nigeria, where youngsters spend a lot of time dreaming. Akeem dreamed of playing sports, but it was World Cup soccer he aspired to. He also wanted an American education and a chance to play basketball. When Akeem Olajuwon arrived here at Houston's Intercontinental Airport, he was as alone as a college athlete can be. He had no scholarship. There were no coaches or assistants to greet him. He even had to take a taxi to get to campus. If anything, the kid from Nigeria was determined to make it. And he spent his waking hours hitting the books and hitting the boards, and he was a good student at both. In three years, his Cougars never missed a Final Four, but they never won. The big heartbreak, North Carolina State. Wittenberg, oh, it's a long ways, and won it! I couldn't believe what happened. I was very, very disappointed, you know, because I was... I thought we had a better team, and we, you know, we were going to win. The next year, Elijah Wan turned pro, another charmed decision. His hometown Rockets won the coin toss with Portland and made Akeem the first pick in the draft. The education continued, and Akeem was going straight to the top of his class. To see how fast he catches on, uh, he really, he's really uh, a quick learner. Considering Akeem Olajuwon never played the game of basketball until he came to the United States, uh, I think Akeem is probably the greatest athlete I've ever seen. To Olajuwon, he puts it up, it's in! The Rockets win it! And off the court, he's at the top of his game as well, and his girlfriend Lita says he is as generous as they come. He's the most given person that I've ever encountered, especially someone that's a superstar. Akeem is constantly, constantly giving to everyone around him. And that's why I think he's constantly getting blessings back, because he has such an open heart. In all areas, Akeem is constantly unbeatable. Unbeatable. There are commercials, and he's on the talk show circuit a lot because it seems everybody wants to be a part of his dream. And he is very happy to oblige. That's the best thing that can ever happen to anybody. You can't buy a fan. You like that fan part, don't you? Well, I can't complain. <laughs> no, there's not too much he needs. Oh, there's one little thing. Akeem would like an NBA championship ring. That would be a special ring because I work for it. I think I deserve to have one. That almost qualifies as a story of lifestyles of the rich and famous. Akeem is already rich, but he'd like to become even more famous with that world championship ring. And Brent tell Magic, we sent a pool like that over to his house with the basketball court on the bottom, but I don't think either one of those guys needs to practice. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs. I sure would love to have it right now and take a dip in it, as hot as it is in here. Yeah, it's a little sticky in the Boston Garden. <laughs> yeah, but they okay. still love you, chanting over and over, beat L.A. <laughs> what about Akeem now? How good is he going to become in the years ahead, Magic? Oh, just totally awesome. I think it's going to be his league in the next year or so. He, he's cat quick. You can't box him out. He has a ray of shots. You just can't stop the man, and he runs the floor extremely well. All right, well, he's going to need some extra here in the second half to bring the Rockets back. And when we return, it'll be Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn describing the second half right after we bring you the CBS News news break. From Boston, CBS Sports coverage of the 1986 NBA Finals is sponsored by Lowenbrow, the beer brewed around the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow. Plymouth, a division of Chrysler Corporation. Plymouth, the pride is back, born in America again. And by Hewlett Packard, the people who turn your business computing problem into a business computing solution. 
The Celtics lead by 10 at halftime, and here's basically how they did it with this kind of shooting display, mostly uh, Bird and McHale. They were uncanny in the first half, and the problem for the Houston Rockets has been in the backcourt because the Twin Towers have done their job, but not so much the Houston guards. They have struggled, and the Celtics guards are perfect from the free throw line at 9 for 9. But what did Bill Fitch say about Larry Bird and the Rodney McRae matchup for going in. Well, Bill Fitch said that if the Rodney McRae matchup, the margin between McRae and Bird was close, that they would wear championship rings. It's not there tonight in the first half. He only scored two points. Peterson, who also played quick forward, scored four. That's game number one, where McRae did a tremendous job with Larry Bird, who had a fine game, but tonight... Bird has 20, McRae has two, Peterson has also played Larry Bird, but it hasn't been the way Bill Fitch would like. Moments ago, Pat O'Brien, Pat O'Brien had talked, and we do not have that tape with Bill Fitch.